Today on America's Test Kitchen, Bridget and Julia unlock the secrets to the ultimate pad thai. Jack challenges Bridget to a tasting of coconut milk. Lisa tests electric kettles. And Elle makes Julia foolproof Penang beef curry. It's all coming up right here on America's Test Kitchen. In the 1930s, the dish pad thai had a great impact on the identity of Thailand. The Public Welfare Department started a Buy Thai campaign. Now, along with the basic recipe for pad thai, the slogan, Noodle is Your Lunch, was introduced. Now, Julia and I do not need to be convinced to eat pad thai, but making it at home can be a challenge. So we're going to show you how to make pad thai noodles for lunch and dinner, maybe a snack. Oh, definitely a snack. Sounds good. <laughs> Pad thai is very easy to make, nothing's very difficult. There are a lot of little ingredients. So with our recipes, we focused on one, making it easily accessible to the American pantry, and two, we wanted to serve four people. We're gonna start by making a condiment that we're gonna serve with our pad thai. And this is a third of a cup of white vinegar. And we're gonna add a little bit of spice. This is a serrano chili. I'm just gonna slice it into very thin pieces. I'm gonna go all the way to the stem. And we're just gonna put these slices right into the vinegar. All right, moving on. We're gonna start with a preserved daikon radish. It adds sort of a pickly flavor. It's a little bit of heat in the daikon. Couldn't find it, really hard to find in a normal supermarket. So we're gonna make our own pickled radish just using radishes. It would make sense. Right? And so here I have a quarter cup of water, and I dissolved already half a teaspoon of sugar and a quarter teaspoon salt okay. in the microwave. It took about 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. And now I'm gonna cut up some radish into nice sticks. And to do that, you just wanna slice the radish lengthwise, and then you can just slice the slices into nice matchsticks. Yeah, sometimes you can find daikon that's fresh at your supermarket. It's also called Japanese radish often, but it can be a little tricky to find sometimes, so just regular radishes is always a sure bet. All right, so right into this little brine I made. Now these radishes are gonna sit in here for about another 15 minutes, then we're gonna take them out and pat them dry, and we'll toss them into the pad thai at the very end. Sounds great. So set those aside. Moving on to the sauce. This is the real deal. This is the heart of pad thai. This is a quarter cup of fish sauce. Into it, I'm gonna add three tablespoons of sugar and three tablespoons of an ingredient we couldn't substitute. Now, this is tamarind. And tamarind has a very sort of raisiny, sour, tangy flavor. You can buy it in different forms, but we liked tamarind concentrate, three tablespoons, and the flavor is really just iconic to pad thai. It's kind of the perfect fruit in terms of sweet and sour balance all in one. All right, so we're just gonna whisk this together until the sugar dissolves. Sounds good. Now a little bit more about tamarind. I remember when you couldn't buy tamarind at a supermarket, now you can find it in many different forms. This is what fresh tamarind looks like. It's a pod and inside it has a very flavorful pulp. This is the pulp that's been concentrated into a very thick paste. Both of these are very flavorful, but they need to be reconstituted a lot in order to use for pad thai. You can also find tamarind in powdered form, but it's a little too weak for our palate, so we love the ready-to-use concentrate, which is what Julia's using today. It's ready to use right out of the package, big flavor. You do wanna make sure to find on the package the words product of Thailand or manufactured in Thailand. This is your best bet. All right, so on to odd ingredient number two, <laughs> dried shrimp. So in Thailand, what they do is they take these tiny dried shellfish, they peel them, they salt them, and they let them dry in the sun. And the flavor they add is really distinct and very authentic. But they're really hard to find, so we're gonna make our own. Okay. So here I have four shrimp, and I've already peeled them completely and deveined them, and we're gonna cut them into small pieces, cut them through the middle, almost like butterfly mm -hmm. them, just all the way through, so that they're nice and thin. And then we're gonna take them, we're just gonna cut them into about half inch pieces. I'm gonna take all this chopped shrimp, toss it with eighth of a teaspoon sugar, eighth of a teaspoon salt. I'm gonna stir this around. And we tried drying it in a skillet. It took about 20 minutes, which was much too long. And we found it much easier to dry them in the microwave. Before you put them in the microwave, you wanna spread them out. Just making sure none of these shrimp are really touching each other, because as they start to dry, they turn into little gluey bits. Yeah, we're finding out that the microwave does more and more. We're actually toasting coconut in the microwave. Yep. Perfect way to do that, toasting nuts. And now we're drying shrimp. What can't it do? <laughs> it's a miracle. All right, so into the microwave they go. Again, 50% power for a couple minutes until they reduce their size by about half and they're very dry. Oh, these look perfect. 
All right, so these were in the microwave for just a few minutes, and you can see they're about half their size. This is so clever. <laughs> and doing this adds such an incredible depth of flavor to the finished pad thai, and it's so easy. Salty and chewy. Mm -hmm. We love it. All right, so we're going to set these over here. Now time for the main ingredient, the rice noodles. So this is eight ounces of dried rice noodles, and these are the thick ones. They're about a quarter of an inch thick. The best way to rehydrate them is to use boiling water. It's about six cups of boiling water. We're just going to let them sit there for about eight minutes. And I'm going to give them a gentle toss every few minutes to make sure they're not sticking together. And just till they're nice and soft and pliable. All right, Bridget, so these noodles have been soaking for about eight minutes. And you can see they're nice and soft, but they're not mushy yet. Because remember, we still have to cook them a little bit with the sauce and the other ingredients in the skillet. You can see I'm pulling on it a little bit. Stretchable. It's not breaking. All right, so now it's time to drain these guys. We also want to give them a good rinse, both to cool them down and help prevent them from sticking to one another. It washes away some of that starch. You really rinse them well. All right, those look pretty good. They're nicely rinsed. Now I'm gonna toss lightly with two teaspoons of oil, prevent them from sticking together as they sit and wait their turn in the skillet. All right, put these back in the bowl. There you go, noodles. <laughs> and we are ready to start cooking. So we're gonna start by adding two teaspoons of vegetable oil. And I have to say, putting your vegetable oil in a container like this, very handy, especially with stir fries, when you're adding little bits of oil at a time. We like a skillet because it has a nice flat bottom, a lot of surface area, works well for stir fries mm -hmm. and pad thai. So that oil is just shimmering. I'm gonna start with our dried shrimp. We're gonna cook these for about three minutes until they turn about golden brown. You just wanna give them a stir every now and again, make sure they're not getting too golden on one side. Oh, you can see they're nicely golden all the way around. And now we're gonna start to build our pad thai. Rather than build it in the skillet, which has limited surface area, our aha moment for making enough pad thai for four people is building it in a bowl. Into the skillet, we're gonna add another teaspoon of oil. Now we're gonna add a little garlic and some scallions. Now traditional recipes use a combination of shallot and garlic chives. Garlic chives, really lovely, hard to find, unless it's the height of summer around here. So we're gonna substitute both scallion whites and scallion greens. Mm. So this was four scallions. I separated the whites and minced them. And to this, we're gonna add one clove of garlic we're just gonna cook this in the pan off for about a minute. That looks pretty good. So here I'm gonna take the pan off the heat, scrape this into the bowl with the dried shrimp. And you wanna make sure to get this all out because any bits left will really start to burn. Two more teaspoons of oil. We're gonna crank the heat up to high and now we're gonna add some shrimp. So traditionally there are three proteins in pad thai, tofu, eggs, and shrimp. For this recipe, we wanted to make it a little easier. We jettisoned the tofu and we kept the shrimp and the eggs. It's a pound of shrimp total, but minus the four shrimp that we used earlier to make our own dried shrimp. Let them cook for about three minutes until they turn opaque and are slightly browned around the edges. Of course, we'll flip them over halfway through. These shrimp look pretty well cooked. You can see they're nicely browned on both sides. And that only took about three minutes. They're gorgeous. Now, we're actually gonna add the eggs right to the pan with the shrimp. Cleared a little area in the center of the pan. Two more teaspoons of oil go right in the center. In go the eggs. Now this is four large eggs that I beat together. You wanna stir them around. You just wanna cook them for about 30 seconds or so. Into the bowl. Okay, now back in the skillet. Two more teaspoons of oil. Again, we're still over high heat. We're gonna add the drained rinsed noodles and the sauce. Mm. We're just gonna cook this three minutes or so until most of the sauce is absorbed into those noodles. All right, so these noodles are nicely cooked. They're warmed through. All that sauce has been absorbed. And it's go time. Yay! So into the bowl go all those noodles. To this, we're gonna add a little bit of our vinegar that we're also gonna serve with. We're gonna add two teaspoons. Now we're gonna add the scallion greens. Remember we added the scallion whites earlier, and that's replacing those garlic chives. Here are our drained and patted dry pickled radish. Last but not least, two cups of bean sprouts. Nice little bit of crunch right mm -hmm. in there. Now we're just gonna toss this all together. I wish you guys could be here because what I'm smelling is amazing. All this oh. freshness and there, a little bit of pickle. Mm. And of course the fish sauce. Mm. Amazing. All right, so we're gonna put this onto a nice big family style platter. Oh, it serves more than two. It does, thank <laughs> goodness, right? And it's not done till we finish with a few roasted but unsalted peanuts. It's about a quarter cup, lightly chopped. 
And I'm just gonna platter you up a whole big pile. Some shrimp, some of that egg. A little bit of vinegar? Yes, All thank right. you. A couple of chilies might fall mm, in there. Perfect. There we go. I'm gonna give you a lime wedge or two. Let's take a moment to drink this in, shall we? Mm -hmm. This is light and fresh mm. and clean tasting. Everything is perfectly cooked. Mm. The egg is not dried out. It's actually still nice and moist. And the shrimp, not rubbery at all. It's perfect. And I love getting those little bits of dried shrimp in there. I tell you what, they are the bacon of the crustacean world. <laughs> so our outstanding pad thai recipe, well, it starts with a homemade sauce. Use the microwave to turn fresh shrimp into dry and then soak and drain rice noodles. Stir fry in batches, toss with homemade toppings, and then finish with peanuts. So from America's Test Kitchen to your kitchen, noodles are now your lunch or maybe dinner or anytime with our everyday pad thai. <laughs> it's incredible, isn't it? Kettles are handy for making coffee and tea, but they're also great for any cooking task that calls for boiling water, like rehydrating dried mushrooms or softening lasagna noodles. We tested 10 electric kettles priced from $33 to $100. We timed how long they took to boil, how precisely they poured, and how comfortable and safe they felt to handle. We even did a blind tasting of the boiled water, checking for off flavors. And we boiled them over and over. Our favorites went through 365 rounds. That's daily use for a year. They all shared some good features. First, they're all cordless, so only the base plugs in. And they can all go on the base in any direction, so they're easy to pick up and put down. And finally, they all shut off automatically. Beyond that, some of these kettles were not so great. When you fill a kettle and it's hard to see inside, that's a pain. We really hated peering at little windows or tiny lines inside the kettles or extra gauges. We loved the glass kettles because you got instant visibility for filling and boiling. And for feeling secure, a few of these had problems. This Krups model, rocks on its base, and it never quite feels like you put it down right. And the lid flips back so fast it flicks hot water on you. Now the best ones, like this OXO, open slowly and easily, and they feel well controlled, even when you're pouring from a full boiling kettle. We also liked wide openings like this, so we could get in and clean. And finally, speed and capacity were critical factors. In this lineup, boiling a quart of water took anywhere from four and a half to six and a half minutes. And that's faster than the nine minutes it took in a covered saucepan on the stove. But our two favorites were among the fastest. They took less than five minutes. Our top choice is this one. It's the OXO on Clarity Cordless Glass Electric Kettle for $79.95. It holds 60 ounces of water if you need a lot in a hurry. For a slightly smaller kettle that performs just as well, the 48 ounce Capresso Silver H2O electric kettle at $56 is our best buy. The average coconut will yield about three cups of coconut milk, but since it's a lot easier to open a can than a coconut, Jack is here to tell us which brand of canned coconut milk is best. So I promise, you don't have to drink three cups of coconut milk. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> what you see here is straight from the can. We stirred them back together because there is both the solid fat, coconut cream, mm -hmm. and the liquid. We did some other tests where we made coconut rice pudding. We made a beautiful Thai coconut Yum. soup with chicken. You're getting this straight up. So Thanks, Jack. Yeah, so start <laughs> tasting. A couple things I want you to look for. Okay. When it came to flavor, what we really want is something kind of in the middle of the road. There were some brands that had no coconut flavor whatsoever, and then others where you feel like, oh, I'm drinking suntan lotion. <laughs> <laughs> I hope I can identify those. Yeah. So one of the big factors is the amount of fat, and I brought some little samples here. The people we work with come up with the craziest tests, and they said, well, let's figure out how we can figure out how much liquid and how much solid is every can. So we took a church key can opener to the bottom, let the liquid drain out, then we opened the top. Very smart. And what you see here, there's a lot of liquid, it's kind of a weird gray color, and then this basically looks like the cranberry jello that you would get out of a can, <laughs> so it has the ridges. It's very solid fat. This is from our winner. There's a lot less liquid, it's not separated, and the cream is soft and billowy. And the reason why this is a big deal is when we started making soup, we got kind of separated coconut milk, which sure. is not very nice. No. So I interrupted your enjoyment it's of right. uh, coconut milk. When you crack open a fresh coconut, the liquid that comes out, that's the coconut water. 
that is being sold, uh, you know, in those cartons and is oh so popular. I feel like coconut has a great PR agent <laughs> along with kale. Yes, that's <laughs> true. Coconut milk, what they do is they shred the fresh coconut. They then add some water. And this is where you can get more or less water in the final product. And then they squeeze out the liquid that comes from the shredded coconut and the water. And if they add too much water during that process, yes, they get more yield, but we get less flavor and we get a thin texture. The other thing that's a really big factor here, we actually found a coconut expert at a university in Thailand. I wish I was a coconut expert in Thailand, especially. Yes, a professor, Dr. T, as we referred to him, mm. told us that young coconuts have less fat. Mm. And so the more mature the coconut, the more fat and the more flavor that you're gonna get in the can. Kind of like humans. <laughs> <laughs> Anything that you're noticing in these four samples? This one, I can't find any coconut flavor at all. In fact, it actually tastes like the can to me, more than coconut milk. This one is quite nice. I like it because it's a little bit sweet. Okay. Either of these two, I actually quite like. This one is my favorite, it's a little bit sweeter. This one is, oh, maybe not. <laughs> Going back and forth. Actually, I like that one better. Okay. So right. I'm gonna say that this one is my favorite, this one's the runner up, and these, these two can just go away. All right, so this is the final decision. Right, right. You've locked in? I think so. Uh, can I phone a friend? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm a friend. There you go. Uh, but I'm not gonna give you any more hints. <laughs> All right, so start with what I think is the winner? Yeah. All right. This was in the middle of the pack. Oh, um, what's wrong with me? Uh, this was a good one, but it wasn't the best. It had nice level of fat and mm -hmm. nice flavor, but our tasters, kind of agreed with your first instinct. So if you want to go All one right. over. Ah, oh, yay. yes, so I this is the Arroy G. Yes, mind. you changed your mind, <laughs> and I was like, oh, she had locked in, and then she <laughs> locked it out. We have problems with the ones on the end, though. That was at the bottom of the rankings. That's Taste of Thai. It was actually not recommended. We had a lot of problems when we made soup with mm. that. It had no flavor and also kind of separated on us. Yeah, it's kind of a why bother. <laughs> <laughs> this is Kame. This is also down towards the bottom of okay. the rankings. We just felt like it did not perform as well as our top choice. Well, there you go. You don't have to crack open coconuts yourself. Just go out and buy our winner. It's the Arroy D Coconut Milk. It's 99 cents for 14 ounces. The three most popular dishes at a Thai restaurant are Pad Thai, the rice noodle dish, Tom Kagai, that chicken soup with coconut milk and lemongrass, and Penang beef curry. Today, Elle is here to give Penang beef curry a test kitchen treatment. That's right. Savory Thai curries are often categorized by the paste that gives them flavor and thickness. So we have green and hot, we have yellow and sweet, and then we have Penang, which is a sweeter version of red curry. Mm. It's my favorite. I'm in. Great. So we have here two pounds of beef. In the test kitchen, we tried this recipe with chuck roast, beef shank, and brisket. And at the end of the day, we found that boneless short rib was the way to go. Keeping with tradition, I'm gonna cut this piece into three equal parts. And then we're going to cut it a quarter of an inch against the grain. And when cutting meat this thinly, it helps if the meat's very cold. That way it's easier to slice through. Okay, so I'm gonna add this to a large saucepan and cover it with water. The key to getting the desired tenderness that's necessary for this dish is first bringing it to a boil. I'm gonna put it on high and let it reach a boil. Once it has, I'll cover it, turn it down to low, and let it cook for an hour to an hour and a quarter. All right, so our beef's been simmering for over an hour. I think it's ready. Ooh, it smells beefy. It does smell beefy. So I'm gonna just do a check. You'll know that it's ready when it's fork tender. Well, look at that, the fork just slides right in. Right through. And so this simmering not only made the beef tender, but it also actually mellowed out the flavor of the beef. The tempering of the beef is super important because in this dish, the beef should accentuate the curry, not the other way around. All right, so in the pan, we have two tablespoons of vegetable oil, and we have two tablespoons of red curry paste. Now, a lot of recipes I know start with coconut milk in the pan, and they cook that coconut milk down until it cracks and all the fat comes out. But we're not doing that here. No, we found that vegetable oil gives us the most consistent results, and we're very happy with that. We're gonna just let this cook for about five to eight minutes, and we'll know that it's ready when it starts to turn dark red, and you'll start smelling a nice peppery aroma. All right. Okay, so this has been cooking for about eight minutes. As you can see, it's dark and red. It looks quite different than it did when we started. To that, we're gonna add one can of coconut milk and just kind of give it a stir to break it up. Oh man, that's starting to look good. 
To this, I'm gonna add four teaspoons of fish sauce and two teaspoons of sugar. The fish sauce and the sugar gives that amazing salt and sweet flavor that is very signature in Thai food. I'm also gonna add a Thai chili pepper, which I've halved, and this is optional. And I'm also opting in for two more tablespoons of red curry paste because I definitely have a desire for fire. Those are some of my favorite flavors. I like where the it's coconut going. Coconut milk and the spice. All right, so we're just gonna make sure that we get that sugar dissolved in the mixture. So just kinda make sure it doesn't feel gritty on the bottom of the pan. I'm finally going to add this nice tender beef that we let cook for an hour. Mmm, starting to take shape. Yes, make sure all the pieces of meat get covered. We just have to let it simmer until it's thickened and reduced by half. All right, so this has been simmering for 12 to 15 minutes. It smells amazing. So to finish it off, I have here six kefir lime leaves that I've taken the vein out of and sliced thinly. And I'm gonna just let these cook for about one to two minutes. All right. So kefir lime leaves, also known as makru lime leaves, infuse a unique tangy floral flavor to traditional Southeast Asian dishes. Now, unlike a bay leaf, which they look like, you can actually eat them. And now these leaves are readily available in Asian markets and they freeze well. But if you can't find them, a combination of lemon zest and lime zest will approximate their flavor. All right, so we've given the kefir lime leaves a couple minutes. I think they have kicked our dish up like a whole bunch of notches. <laughs> it smells amazing. It does, and is it's it ready. Time? Yeah, it's time to eat. Let me just serve it up. That sauce is so pretty and creamy. And you can still smell that good spiciness of the red curry paste. I'm just going to add these chopped peanuts. It's the third cup. You've been so gracious. I'm going to serve you. <laughs> I've been quite patient because this smells so good. <laughs> oh, that looks delicious. Mmm. You know it tastes even better than it smells? I was a little skeptical about the kefir lime leaves at first because we don't eat bay leaves, but this delicious citrusy flavor that it has, it kind of cuts the heat a little bit. Now, as you mentioned earlier, the beef isn't supposed to have a huge presence here. It's supposed to be beefy, but it's really all about that sauce. It is. I'm so glad I can make this at home now. To make this flavor-packed Thai classic, start by simmering slices of boneless beef short ribs in water. Fry Thai red curry paste in a little oil, stir in coconut milk, fish sauce, sugar, and a fresh chili. Finish with kefir lime leaves and peanuts, and there you have it. From our test kitchen to your kitchen, perfect Penang beef curry. You can get this recipe and all the recipes from this season, along with our tastings, testings, and select episodes at our website, americastestkitchen.com. Thanks for watching America's Test Kitchen. What'd you think? Well, leave a comment and let us know which recipes you're excited to make, or you can just say hello. You can find links to today's recipes and reviews in the video description. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. See you later. I'll see you later.